uh, thank you, my professors. Uh, today I'd like to, uh, to discuss with you an important step in the publication process, uh, which is peer review process. These are our objectives uh, today from uh, the talk. And uh, these are the outlines I will talk, uh, divided it in two parts. The first part will discuss mainly about uh, some general concepts of the peer review and uh, what's the importance. And the second part, we will go through how to read and how to comment and uh, finally submit your reports for the uh, editor system. So let's start with the uh, part one. So first question, what's the peer review process? Peer review means uh, critical assessment of uh, submitted article or manuscript to a specific journal, usually in your field. And this submission will be revised by experts in the field. Usually those experts were not a part of the editorial staff. So why do we need the peer review? Is it important? Actually, imagine that you have a new result, new interesting one, or uh, a general concept need to be published in the scientific community, and uh, you need to prove its validity. So the best way for validation through the peer review process. So the general concept of the importance of peer review it means that peer review, it means the standardization and the validation of your scientific contribution. Also peer review provide the scientific community and journals by standardization of the field, helps journals select high quality manuscripts prevents against misconduct, provides editorial staff with opinions, and definitely improves the quality of your manuscript. Who should be a reviewer? Usually the reviewer, they are experts in their fields, and this expertise should be validated, should be proved. And the best approval by their scientific contribution through editing articles, uh, submission articles, presenting uh, new concepts and uh, new ideas. And uh, one of the best indicators for the expertise is their citation in the field, how the articles help the other authors and help other scientific papers. So who should be ideal reviewer? The ideal peer review, those are gentlemen like a mentor for you, especially provide you with a fair and a constructive comments and advice. These are gentlemen. You will find them most of the time. However, in some occasion or sometimes, you may facing another types of reviewers, may find someone arguments or have destructive comments, or you cannot communicate with them. You feel that you cannot, they cannot understand you. However, don't worry about those because most of the time you will find those gentlemen, especially when you submitted for high-ranking journals. Each reviewer has a responsibility, especially this responsibility starting from the acceptance of the invitation email or invitation letter. The first responsibility should be being fair and constructive, should completing the review in a timely fashion, and this is a very important point because the, any delay will make a harmful effect for the authors, for the journal timeline, and even for the reputation of the reviewer. Also, to be ready to dealing with multiple iteration because most of the submission need another revision, maybe second time or third time. So it's not logic to accept the first invitation and reviews it in the second time or third time. This is, will make a significant delay and significant uh, harmful effect for the journal and your reputation too. 
This is a, a chart from a prestigious nature journal indicating the process of their peer review. But the most concerning point is how many days concerning from the first publication to the acceptance. It includes about 173 days. So if the peer reviewer doesn't follow the timeline, you will prolong this average. And this is not good for the journal. Other types of peer review you should know about before acceptance of the invitation process, you should know what's the type of the review you will be request for. As it's single blind review, it means that the names of the reviewers are hidden, or double blind review means that the authors and the reviewer, both of them are hidden, or open review, it means that all the names are open during the review. And be careful from the fourth one, which is transparent review. It means that the author's names and the reviewer's names and even the, your comments as a reviewer will be available for the readers upon request. So it's very important to be, know what type of reviewer and be professional in writing in your report and comments. Nature Journal made a survey about the benefits of the peer review because peer review is a free job without payment, even you cost your time. So they make a survey, what's the, are, what are the benefits of the reviewers they take from this process? And I'm citing some statements of the reviewers. One of them, peer reviewer is one of the ways I keep up to date with work in my field. Another one, by looking at the other researchers' work, I am able to improve my own writing. I am able to build a relationship with editors, which could be useful in the future. I like to peer review as I feel that I am contributing to the advancement of the science. Also, a new skill which demonstrates my commitment to the scientific community and will help to improve my CV. These all actual benefits for the this process. Now, if you have got an email, so you have options to accept or decline. Actually, you have three options, accept, decline, or flag. What's meant by flag, we'll discuss in the next slides. However, when you receive an invitation, you will ask yourself mainly three questions. Am I qualified? Do I have a time? Or do I have a conflict of interest? If these questions answered by yes, so you can accept it. And if no, you can, re, re, you can decline the invitation. So what about the flag? Flag scenario, this means that you have a concern about this manuscript. This concern could be have a different scenarios. For instance, we have you have recently collaborated with the paper's authors. So is it ethically to peer review their current work or not? Another scenario, it's on subject that appears very similar to your current work, the same concern. It is a prestigious journal, but you don't feel confident on the subject. You can ac you accept, but you are short in time, so want to ask someone from your lab to help. All these different scenarios, you can face it during, after, after invitation. Simply flag, this is mean that you will send an email for the editorial staff and present your concern and the final decision will be for them. If they accept, so you will go. If they decline, so you will send uh, apologies letter and the, they will seek for another reviewer. So how to increase your chance to be a peer reviewer? Simply make yourself and your work easy to find. There are some, some tips you find is, like when you get an ORC ID number or identifier, this is like a governmental ID. This is a researcher ID, a unique researcher ID. You can do through internet. So it's very important, especially your family name, similar to other authors. So through this number, anyone can distinguish between you. Also keep university and 
personal websites up to date where possible. You can also use sites such as Poplon to record and get credit to your peer review activity. So how to increase the chance to be a reviewer? The best way when your senior introduce yourself, introduce yourself, introduce you to the other editors, especially to help to help you to the review in other manuscript. This is one of the best way. Also joining the scientific community of your speciality, this is make a chance to uh, has a broad and wide contact with the editorial staff of the interested journals. So let us shift to the part two. How I read, how can I read, and how can I write my comments? Before preparing to the review after your acceptance, you have a simple checklist. Do you have, do you know what the journal expects from you? Because some journals ask from you to review a part of the article, not the whole article. Also, are you clear on what type of review it is? It is blind review, single, double, transparent. Will you identify the reveal? Your comments are not like transparent review and have you got everything you need? Because there is some papers you need to make more clarification. You need more data. You provided with some statistics or some uh, more deep uh, statistic results. All these should be available for you upon request. So step one in the strategy and suggested the strategies to take to form the first impression. The first impression usually done through reading the introduction, figures, conclusion, references, and some reviewers like to read the paper in one, hold the paper in one go. The second advice in this strategy, you take a rest, get away from the paper, and don't think about it. After that, after a while, we'll take initial thorough reading and in this stage, prepare pen and paper to write down two major components of your reports. The initial reads row will browse and will expose to many concepts of the paper. Is this is a suggested questions to you can ask? Is there a clear and important research questions? Is there is a clear hypothesis? Is there a question properly answered by the study? Are all the claims supported by the data? Is the novelty level of the study appropriate to the journal? Is the study design appropriate? Are there any fundamental flaws in the study design that the paper has a strong technical elements or not? You may take a, another stress or not, but I don't prefer that. However, the major comments you should write down, including the major sections, patient and methods, and the study designs, and the results section. You should analyzing the study design and make notes, is it appropriate or not? Also, will the methodology and analysis were appropriate for results and support the conclusions or there is a contradiction? There is a feedback about the major comments. You can go through the figures, especially in our uh, field as a radiologist, figures are very important. And you can step after that to the minor comments, including any other parts of the article, like the title, uh, abstract, and any grammatical error or spelling, something like that. So the major comments items you should know about it, problem with the study design, incorrect analysis, insufficient data, improper referencing, wrong interpretation of results, and understand limitation of the paper. The minor comments include other parts of the paper, title, abstract, any minor additional analysis, or suggested uh, changes in the figures. I will provide you some template questions for each part of the article, including from the title. So title, you can ask, is it the title descriptive to the report? Does it draw the interest of the reader? Does it focus on the main and the most novel findings? Also, the, regarding the abstract, please remember 
top five questions, top five points, because they abstract, this is the usual uh, invitation document supported by the email. You should ask, if the, are the authors, why did the authors do this study? And what did they, they do? And how did they do? And uh, the results is conclusive or not? And the conclusion is supported by the results or not? When it comes to introduction, introduction is, my opinion, in one of the best ways to address the importance of the letter. The introduction expose the literature in a good manner or not, and uh, usually end with your hypothesis, ends with your question of answer, and why you will do this study. So some suggested questions, including does it give enough information through the literature? Does it cause up-to-date and the reference? Does why this study was necessary? As usually, this is the last paragraph ended by the your hypothesis. The next one with the assessment of the study design, which is concerning about the uh, major flows of the study design for which uh, many papers could be rejected. So the most important whether the study design and the methodology used were appropriate to reach the aims set out in the introduction. Or they allow the researcher to replicate the experiments. The any aim of the research uh, when it finished, this is means that it is repeatable or not. Or you just only one you can do it. This is not a successful paper. Also, you can suggest alternative method if you think an additional experiments will strengthen the conclusions. Again, explain which study design you believe. You remember that you are advisor and give a fair and constructive comment. So you should say that it's not a wrong study design, but you should say what's the right one and what's the appropriate one. Assessing the techniques, if there is a control should be involved in this the study according to the study design, are there defined outcome, it is reproducible, a good statistical test, there is a word bias or ethical guidelines, follow the ethical guidelines or not. Another major component of the test results, and the, the most important, you should be sure the results doesn't manipulate it by the authors to achieve a specific conclusion. These are all the data present, the clarity. This include both text and figures. Do the results of the figures manuscript, are the figures published quality with insufficient quality and the strong data, and there is sufficient data analysis or not? Also, the conclusion of the study should be supported by the results. So this is a very important question, for especially for the editorial staff. If the results goes was concluded by the uh, conclusion or not. And finally, discussion, answer the research problem. You will browse the conclusion, you will browse the, your study design and why it's important, and you will study and the browse the implications of your study and the what's importance in the field, and you will discuss the other articles uh, exposed to the same issue. And the finally structure of your report should start by one to two summary of paragraph summary indicating for the journal editors, you actually you read the paper carefully, then you can write a major comment that the paper demonstrate you any technical, major technical errors, then write down your major comments, followed by minor comments, followed by your conclusion or your advice. So this is uh, the conclusion which you should describe uh, regarding the, uh, the importance of the discussion and the results, and finally, the limitation of the study is presented or not. So 
Thank you and my best wishes for the next literature.